Welcome. This is Jackie Rutterman, and today's practice is going to be focusing on the spleen and the stomach, the earth element. Right here, you have the picture of the spleen meridian, and it's uh, a yin meridian to the yang stomach. Yin meridians start from the earth, so you see it, it starts from the inner side of the big toe, uh, moving up the leg. Uh, it is a bilateral meridian, so this picture only sh shows one side. Um, and here, the next picture, you'll see the stomach meridian. Um, not the best picture, come close, and that starts all the way up by the nose and then goes up the jaw and then descends down. So the yang meridians start from the heaven, descend down to the earth. Um, the element of the stomach and spleen is the earth, as I said, and the um, arch archetypal uh, element is the figure of the mother our first source of nourishment. And this idea of nourishing ourselves is very important in the stomach and spleen relationship in Chinese medicine. And uh, today we will be working with that and I will be pointing out uh, some very powerful um, acupressure points. So I hope you enjoyed today's class. Welcome. And we will start with uh, Varasana, Hero's Pose, today, um, because the meridians that we're working with, the stomach and the spleen, are through the uh, tops of the thighs. And I will go over that today. But if you are having knee issues, then take two blocks, because this is really quite a therapeutic posture for the knees. Um, a lot of knee problems really start in the hips. It's more about the hips. And uh, then they are felt in the knees. So the yin practice really addresses a lot of hip issues. But for now, um, unless there is some major problem that you're going through bone on bone or, or whatnot. But if this is OK, start in hero's pose, either one block or two. So today, my friends, we are doing stomach and spleen. And the stomach meridian is, and the spleen are all about the earth. And it's the essence uh, in Chinese medicine is this idea of a mothering energy. And we've all come from mothers. Some of us are mothers. And um, no matter what your relationship to your mother has been in the past or is now, or if your mother is in the spirit world, um, they did carry you for nine months. And so it's this real nourishment kind of equality. And I wanted to go back to the earth today because this is what we have. And our body is made of many elements of the earth. And I am starting today's practice with a radical poem. It's not that radical, but it's an oldie but a goodie. And I have been really focusing on nature, my body, um, to bring myself back, and poetry. So we have not come to take prisoners. This is Hafez. So close your eyes and just take in these incredible words that were written, you know, so many, like a thousand years ago. We have not come here to take prisoners, but we've come here to surrender ever more deeply to freedom and joy. We have not come into this exquisite world to hold ourselves hostages from love. Run, my dear, from anything that may not strengthen your precious budding wings. 
run like hell, my dear, from anyone likely to put a sharp knife into the sacred, tender vision of your beautiful heart. We have a sacred duty to befriend those aspects of obedience that stand outside of our house and shout to our reason. Please come out and play, for we have not come here to take prisoners or to confine our wondrous spirits. We have come here to earth to experience ever and ever more deeply our divine courage, freedom, and light. Ah. So just take a moment and if you're able, take the arms overhead, interlace the fingers and take them out in front of you. And then find the um, bones, the humerus bones in the shoulder joint and just ground down into the sit bones as you bring yourself up. And then release the hands. I just want to bring up just two mappings that I will be talking about today. So you have your as is point, your hip, and the spleen line. If you imagine that this is 12 o'clock on, uh, you know, a clock, the spleen <coughs> line is at the um, two o'clock, where the other, it would be 2 p.m and then it comes down the leg on the outside of the kneecap. The stomach meridian is, if this is 12 o'clock, your as is point, is at 10 o'clock, and it comes down the front of the leg on the outside of the kneecap. So I'll reference that, but we're going to start again two blocks. Where's my other block? There it is. And some of you don't have two blocks. So you'll take a pillow behind your head or an extra blanket. And today we're going to take our two blocks like this. We're starting out really gently today. We're taking a blanket. If you have one, we're putting it on top of the blocks. We're making ourselves a little bolster. And I'll move my water here. And we're starting out with the soles of the feet together in Baddha Konasana. And you will see that actually it's going to be, um, yeah, we're just going to have the block right at the lower part of our body and the lowest part of the spine. And just our head is here. Now, if you have the blanket, you will, you can make a little pillow and have the chin sort of face down. So the soles of the feet are together. And I want at first our arms to be crossed, the right arm over the left. And the hands are going to be on the outside of the rib cage. And you'll see this rib cage is somewhat bony, right? So in between each rib, you have what's called the intercostal muscle. And I want you to bring your fingers in between the rib cage. Your, your arms, when crossed, will land at the exact right place of this meridian point. This is a last point on the spleen channel. And close your eyes. And I just want you to come into your breath. Noticing how the breath will fill up this rib cage area on the inhale. And then noticing how on the exhale it contracts and descends. So this is spleen 21, a major point in the spleen channel, it's the last point. And this, if you press right here, or even tap, take the hands, 
And just for a couple of moments, just tap this outer rib area. And then we're going to switch arms, take the arms out, reach out from the heart center to the fingers, and then cross over again. And again, just tapping this outside. So this point brings nourishment on a cellular level to the entire body. So just clearing our system, just giving ourselves a little tapping. And then we'll just allow our arms to release out to a T. Now, if there's something going on with your shoulders and you would prefer the arms overhead, you can do that. You can hold opposite elbows. And I'm going to have you visualize this spleen energy. Now, the spleen meridian is a yin meridian that corresponds to the stomach, yang. And for healing modalities in Chinese medicine, they use acupressure. But you can also use pranayama. You can use visualization, which we're going to do right now. And you can use uh, yogic postures and acu acupuncture. I think I said acupuncture. So just visualize because we are affecting this spleen energy, but we're going to also affect it with our mind. So it starts on the inside of the big toe and it comes up the big toe side of the foot. There's some major points. If you have a bunion right outside of that bunion is usually a major spleen point that we'll talk about. And then it comes around the ankle bone, uh, closer to the medial side, which is the knee side. And then coming up from there to, uh, from the ankle to the outside, the inside of the knee, the medial side of the knee, up into the groin. And then it comes up into the lower belly, all the way up. The spleen itself is located under the rib cage on the left side, but it intersects the stomach, which is right next to it. And then it comes up the torso and out to that rib cage area that we were palpating. So you might be feeling this energy. Now, we're going to take the knees now together. We've been in the posture for a while. We're gonna take the knees up, take a moment. You'll turn yourself to the side, press one hand up, and bring yourself up to sit. We will take the blocks away. And then we're going to bring ourselves back onto our back and we'll affect the top of the thighs now. And so if you've just gone for a morning run or been sitting, this will be really helpful for the body. So the soles of the feet are as wide as the mat and it's this funny twist. You're gonna bring both knees to the right and then take the left arm up and just be here with the left arm. Now you can take the right arm up too and even the right wrist, uh, the right hand can hold the left wrist. And if you wanna give yourself an extra little power acupressure, you can take that right thumb and press the inside of the uh, pinky side of the uh, wrist, which is a heart point, which I'll show you, but you can't probably see me because you're lying down, but it's right at the pinky side of the wrist just pressing that. And we're going to stay here for a bit. 
and you'll notice that you're starting to really activate the um, front of the thigh. So the stomach and spleen, they do, the spleen is more on the inner part of the leg and the stomach is on the outer. And we're going to, I'm going to have you do some palpations in a moment, but I'm going to have you visualize again, this healing energy of the root of the uh, stomach channel now. Now the stomach channel, Meridian starts because it's yang starts by the heavens, you know, up in the face. And it's the same um, right near the large intestine meridian where that starts. So think about imagining in your face. And in fact, bring your hands to your face, if you can, the left hand maybe. Or, the, or both, and start to press alongside the bridge of the nose, and then move your fingers right under the cheekbone. So this is a really potent point. You can press deeply under the cheekbone. And then the meridian goes down by the jaw, and you know how tight that is, right? And then you bring your hands, you don't have to, you can just stay on the jaw or the right under the cheekbone, or you can keep your arms again up overhead. But with your mind, you're going to, um, the line of energy comes down on uh, your face down either side of your neck, it's more internal than the spleen. Remember, the spleen was out by the ribs. It comes more internal. The uh, meridian does also say hello to the spleen on the left and the stomach, and then it uh, comes out. And remember that hip bone that I showed you before, it comes to that 10 o'clock point. If there was a clock on the outside, lateral side of in line with the kneecap all the way down the outer side in line with the knee to the top of the foot where the foot and the ankle meet and then it comes down the front of the foot to the second toe so from here we're going to take we've been in that posture a while so you should slowly take the knees up and bring yourself to the other side. So taking the knees over to the left, bringing the arms maybe overhead. If you enjoyed the palpation of in the face, you can take your pointer fingers to that cheekbone area. I feel like it's really powerful. The color of the spleen in the stomach is yellow. So you can even imagine breathing in the color yellow. And the quality of working with this energy is to bring us back to the body, to ground the system. When the energy in the spleen and the stomach are scattered, are not well nourished, there is a sense of fogginess in the mind, fogginess and anxiety. And when these energies are nourished, there is a grounding, there is a calming effect, there is a solidity, a solidity just like the earth. So bringing us back to this body. And so in, even in Buddhism, all the Buddha talked about that 
the first thing that is taught in meditation practice is meditating on this body. The first practice, one of the first practices that are given, it's called the four foundations of mindfulness, is to reflect on your breath and your body. And there is a specific meditation called the 32 parts of the body that you actually go through in your mind the different parts of the body. It's a very grounding practice. So now we're taking ourselves back up slowly, turn to one side and bring yourself up to sit. Okay, so the next part of the practice, we will take malasana to really work these hips and also to start palpating in the feet. So if this is too intense for you, you can take a block underneath and still get the benefit of the inner groin. But this really is, this is why, you know, people in third world countries are, their hips and knees are so good uh, sitting in this squat position. But it's okay. Don't get down on yourself if that's not a possibility today because this is as powerful. And I want to show you a spot. So there is a, so you have your big toe. And the thumb, you, I have little oh, bunions, and right after the bunion part, really after the big toe, there is a point along this inner um, part of the foot. And actually, there's a lot of powerful points. So the energy you want when you do acupressure, you, the energy, the yin energy goes down. The flow of the um, I'm sorry, the flow of the energy comes up through the body in the yin. So when you're palpating, you want to either press directly on points. So this point, you might feel it tender. It's called spleen four, and it's right on the side of the foot. But there, if you don't get the point, it's fine because there are many other points along this inner arch that are just as powerful but there's usually like a, a, a real tender spot. And this is um, a really important point uh, for anxiety. And so just pressing in there. And then if you wanna go back to that stomach point, you can take your pointer fingers just here and breathe. And I will read again to you while we sit here. Let's see. Mm. So this idea, this stomach um, energy really clears out our perception. And I found this incredible poem that is so appropriate for what's going on right now, really cleaning out our perception. It's by Francois Fenelon, but I'm going to save it for our next pose because we're almost done here. I want you to, now we're gonna come to our seat and we're gonna continue this inner journey of the inner legs. We're just gonna widen our straddle. So for some of us, it is appropriate to come all the way down. For others, if you're dealing with um, some major osteoporosis and your doctor has told you not to come forward, if you feel still in effect with the inner legs, with the hands straight and the spine straight, you can walk your hands forward and just be like this. Um, if 
there's nothing contraindicated, then come down as far as you can. And if you're absolutely are dealing with a spine issue and you're very flexible and you're not feeling this, this pose, Hi. you can do this alternating pose yes. what are you doing? of the legs on a block and the okay. legs, I mean the buttocks on a block and the legs far apart. You don't even have to put yourself on a block. This is a great pose. Okay, so we have all our variations and now we stay. So back to the important poem about really clearing out our perception, which is the essence of the stomach and the spleen. As light increases, we see ourselves to be worse than we thought. We are amazed at our former blindness as we see issuing forth from the depths of our heart a whole swarm of shameful feelings, like filthy reptiles crawling from a hidden cave. We never would have believed that we had harbored such things, and we stand aghast as we watch them gradually appear. But we must neither be amazed or disheartened. We are not worse than we were. On the contrary, we are better. But while our faults diminish, the light by which we see them waxes brighter. And we are filled with horror, but bear in mind for your comfort that we only perceive our malady we only perceive our malady when the cure begins. We only perceive, we only see our malady when the cure begins. So even though things in this world do seem intense and volatile and confusing, this is the beginning. This is when the cure begins. So if you are down on your um, belly, I want you to bring your hands. And we did this on Sunday, if you joined me. So this energy, all of the yin, right, um, is coming from the feet. And I want us to do a little... Um, acupressure. So I just want you to take your hand and actually we're smacking the inner thigh, the inner legs up. We're going to do it three times. That's three. And then on the outside, you really should be doing it 10 times every day. The outside, the stomach energy outside, we're going to smack the top of the thigh and we're going to take it down. And this is the stomach energy. And the way the meridian flows is downwards towards the earth. It starts in the heavens. Yang energy starts in the heavens, and it goes down to the earth. Okay, let's do it on the other side. So um, we're bringing the energy. We're nourishing the energy, the yin energy, up. I did it more than three, and then smacking it, the yang energy down. Balance ourselves. Little acupressure. Good. There we go. Now bring the legs together, and we'll start. Um, we'll start with our right leg in our dragon poses. So. I like to have blocks. You can have an extra blanket for your knee. You can have a strap nearby, which is not necessary. I'll show you that variation. Uh, I'm not sure we did. We did something with pigeon last week with uh, the variation of the strap. But if you have a strap, you can make it quite big loop. You put it around your foot. And um, 
but we're starting with our left, our right leg forward. So you put it around the left foot. And then you put the strap around your shoulder like a handbag. We're taking the right leg first, but don't put the strap around your shoulder yet. Just have it here and come into the pose with the right foot. I like to turn it out because it gives a little more energy in this inner groin area. And just here, just feeling this pose here is, um, you know, really important. We're feeling both the inner spleen energy moving up the leg into the groin. And then we're feeling the stomach energy from down by the face all the way down to that uh, top of the thigh. Now, if you do want to bring it up a little more, up a notch, you take the strap and you put it over your shoulder. And then you could even come a little further down to the forearms. And we stay in this pose. This can be feel really intense. We are going to stay in it for five minutes. You can go back to the acupressure points by the cheekbones. And remember, when you press the yang meridians, it's good to either press directly on them or slightly going down because that's where the energy goes. Now, again, you don't need to have this back leg in a strap. The other variation, if you don't have a strap, is to bend the back leg and take the right arm. Then you can even come into that if you'd like. That, that brings some more energy into the upper chest area where you have the heart and lung meridians. And then you can even start to palpate the feet in between the big toe and the second toe. Those are the stomach and spleen lines. Yeah. Woof, that hurts. I'm going to um, show you some energy lines, another meridian in a second. So between the right knee and the hip, the spleen is that line. That's where it is. So it's sort of on top of this front of the thigh, but on the inside from the knee here, there are really some nice points that you can start to press on this inner part of the body. So just giving yourself that extra little Zing. Okay, we have barely a minute left in the pose. So just being here. Thirty more seconds in the posture, coming down low. Scanning the body for all sensations. And coming back to this moment. I was mentioning to my mentor, um, someone who I did my teacher training with, my meditation teacher training, and I was saying how we're going to uh, start to straighten our leg now. Come back, straighten the leg. 
take the right knee back and just sway the hips from the right to the left. You have your blocks here, but you don't need to have your blocks. You can just take your hands down and just, if it feels appropriate for you, taking a downward dog here. Letting the head go, letting the heels fall down, taking the knees back, having the strap ready for the right side, if that was interesting to you, bringing yourself forward to the left side, taking the left knee, the left foot forward, turning the foot out to the left maybe taking the strap in the foot, maybe bringing the strap over the shoulder like a handbag. And again, not necessary. You can land here and then after a while, take the left arm. So just being here in the posture you can bring yourself down to your forearm. Stop. Is that you, Stank? Come in, babe. Where's your blanket? No, don't eat that. Hey. Another here. five minutes. Here's your blanket right in here. Your posture. We, we've been huh. almost, yeah, about huh. a minute so far. Okay. So I was having no, a discussion that. with my teacher who ran that program, the meditation program, and, um, I said that I wasn't doing, I wasn't meditating. I complained, I said, I don't know, I'm not meditating. And so he asked me, well, what are you doing? And I said, oh, I'm doing a lot of yin practice. And so he said, well, what do you think that is? <laughs> you know, that is, he's like, that's the practice, that is, being still, being in, you know, with your body, having the intention to explore how uh, the sensations in the body are constantly changing, how you are reacting to those sensations. Are they pleasant? Are they unpleasant? Are they neutral? You're focusing on your breath and how it flows in the body. And he just reminded me, you know, the words of the Buddha, you know, everything we need to know about the universe is within. The three characteristics of existence is all you can learn. You can learn about them from this body. And those three characteristics, according to Buddhism, is that there is impermanence. Everything is always changing. There is suffering. And we feel that in our body. Sometimes those, the body feels good. Sometimes it doesn't. And that the most difficult one to sort of grasp is this, the word emptiness. But what it means is that our perceptions, what we perceive is not fixed. And we are seeing that now in our lives. And um, also this idea, I like the idea of emptiness, this made up boundary that we perceive between ourselves and this world and this earth and each other. That there's really an emptiness, there is no boundary. So that's enough. We are starting to straighten that leg. So bringing it out, straightening it.
Good. And then again, taking the knee forward, taking the left knee back. Again, coming to a table and just swaying the hips from left to right. Pressing the hands down, taking ourselves back, downward dog, if that's appropriate. And then taking ourselves down, we're going to neutralize our spine and we'll come down to our back. Last pose. Last two poses. It's an asymmetrical uh, posture. So I'm going to give you um, uh, choices. You can take a blanket underneath your seat or you can take a block. Now the block will be more intense because I'm going to also give you options. Um, we're starting with our left knee and we're just bringing the knee into the chest and then you'll take the right leg out a bit not that far, but you're seeing the left knee is going towards the left side of the chest and the right leg is coming out a little to the right. Now I want you to feel this big opening in that right thigh. Now, if you want it a little more intense, you can take it up a notch. Some people take it up way high. I can't, it's too much for me. But if you're feeling like it's more beneficial for you, you can take it up a notch. But just be mindful of any tingling in the bottom of the feet or in, um, the hands. Actually, it's not too bad. So I'm coming out, but you're staying in. So these asymmetrical postures are very good for aligning the hips. And it's also just another way of, um, this is basically dragon pose, but on your back. And so we're still massaging and juicing up this hip joint on the left side and opening up the fascial tissue all along the right side. So we'll stay there little bit. Now, when you're holding the left side, the left, I want you to start to, on the outside in line with that kneecap on the left, I want you to start to, and where the shin bone is, start to walk up and palpate this outer shin kind of area. It's not all the way out on the outer shin. It's in line with that, um, you know, it's called the lateral side. It's not the kneecap near the groin. It's on knee, the knee side of the pinky foot. And you just want to feel these are really potent points. So there is a point. If you take your four fingers from the bottom of your kneecap, after that pinky finger, there is a potent point called stomach 34. 
that also is like this all-inclusive kind of nourishing point. And it's usually quite tender. Maybe you feel it. All right. So now we're going to release that leg. Just slowly release the leg. Take a moment, take the arms overhead. And just, we're not staying here, but we're just giving ourselves a little stretch. Just take the upper torso to the right for a moment. Just feel this nice side opening. And then take yourself over to the left. And breathe into this left side. I mean the right side, you, you moved your torso over to the left. And then come to neutral and we'll bring the right knee up and hug it in. And again, maybe you can bring the knee a little bit over towards the right the left leg a little bit out towards the left. And sometimes what I do is I'll take my right hand and I'll bring it on the inside and I have the flexibility to even hold on to my foot and do some little massaging on this inner arch, my spleen line. But if you're up high on the block, you know, you have all those options. Um, oh, you know what? I forgot that this class only goes till 45. I thought it ends at one. Okay, we'll speed it up. <laughs> but we're on our last pose. So sorry about that. So we just have another minute. So I wanted to read um, what the word equanimity actually means. It has to do with clarity and wisdom and with being fearlessly open-minded without judgments, desire, or aversion. So equanimity implies accepting the reality of life's highs and lows, points, and developing an attitude of inner peace anyhow amidst the inevitable changes. It entails balancing presence with a forgiving and tolerant heart. And Thich Nhat Hanh says, our true home is the present moment, whatever is happening right here and now. A place and the feeling that we want to get from this practice, this stomach spleen practice. Now let go of that leg. And again, come all the way down with the legs. You're on your blocks or the blanket, and you just want to take the arms overhead, holding opposite elbows. Maybe stretching just over the torso to the right, coming to neutral, taking yourself over to the left a bit. Feeling the breath in the rib cage, and then just coming neutral, bending the right leg, bending the left, lifting up off of that block, coming down and lowering all the way down, taking a blanket underneath your head. And then again, just either keeping the legs bent and the knees in towards one another, that sometimes is really nice for the lower back. Or you could bring the legs straight. 
or if you want just an extra two minutes of that meridian, you maybe cross at the shins, Sukhasana. Maybe it feels comforting as we started to hug yourself just for a moment. Feel those outer intercostal points of this spleen, breathing in, into them, this really important point that nourishes the whole body on a cellular level. And then bringing the arms to the side and just resting here. I am getting up, you are staying down. And I'll end with Nancy Wood is called Connections. Every time we take a breath, we become the universe. The very moment of creation is contained in us and passes on to rocks and trees, animals and fish. The old ones say the essence of life is in water. The essence of life is in the wind, in the earth, in breath, fire, bone, but most of all in the breath. Our first connection to the elk, the hawk, the bear, the buffalo. Without breath, there is no connection. And remember, without connection, there is no creation. Without creation, there is no breath. This is the sacred circle of life unbroken. So if your legs are not bent, bend them now. Turn to one side. Press your hand up into the earth and allow your head to come up last. And I'm sorry that I went a bit over. I think I only lost one person. <laughs> and I know 